everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a client session, I'm going to be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing to support this client with their spleen. They're specifically asking for spleen healing. I'm curious to see what this is going to look like. When I do energy healing for any part of the physical body, it could be tied to an emotional imbalance or something in a chakra, might be a past lifetime. I don't know where the spleen is going to take me. I don't know what the experience is going to be like, but it is going to help harmonize and empower um, the functions of the spleen, which is going to be the functions of your total overall body, which is also going to impact the way you emotionally feel, mentally feel, and it just makes everything feel better. It's like a domino effect. You want to heal the spleen, and it's a domino effect of all kinds of healing <laughs> in the infinite universe of yourself. Okay, I'm going to relax. Before I get started, I just want to thank you very much to the client for this opportunity, and thank you so much for sharing with us here. Thank you, everybody, for participating and watching and learning. This is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, I'm going to relax. I'm in the zone. It's official. I'm starting. Okay. All right, so I'm putting it out there to the universe. All right, so this is what it looks like. I'm an observer and your spleen is, it, it just looks like a, an interesting a frozen planet, really. And it, the planet has uh, ribbons of different shades of blue, gray, white, and really intense purples. It's quite pretty looking. And also, it's like there's a marbling, there's um, a hardened um, state. So when I, when I go to touch it, it's like, oh, it's like a marble. It's like, um, it's just a solid piece. And it, it looks like a planetary body because it's a sphere and um, it's freezing cold like it's it's it got ice around it and okay so this is the next thing that hits me is you're holding yourself back we're gonna make more sense of what that means but as soon as I touch it and I I say oh it's got ice around it it's like oh you're, you're holding yourself back there's some kind of avoidance and I don't know what that means fully yet I, I literally um, let you be who you are. It's okay if you're holding yourself back in some way that we don't understand yet. <laughs> but I'm going to take this um, representation of your spleen and I'm just, I just feel this inside my being and I'm going to pull this into um, warm water, actually. And it, it acts like it's lava, okay? But what I'm doing is I'm clearing out the sense that you can't tolerate a little bit of warmth. <laughs> You can absolutely tolerate warmth. Does something in your life cause you to feel emotionally cold? Because you're intolerant of warmth. And we're talking about water. When I place this like frozen plant into the warm water, the warm water is warm emotions um, are nurturing this cold planetary body. And it's nurturing your spleen, which, which is a warm body. It's part of your the warmth of your body. It's 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 a warm body, but it, it it's behaving ice cold. And this is just like throwing it in lava, and you're screaming. But what I'm doing is taking out the ribbons that um, this is painful because this is not painful. Um, we need to help heal whatever has happened in your life to um, create a sense of cold. I see cold blood. I see um, like cold eyes. I see um, something that um, creates a, hu a human being to react in a way that they become colder. Their personality changes and they become colder. And um, so we're going to explore this, okay? Continuing to warm the spleen. Warm the spleen. This is comfortable. This is wonderful. This is like... I haven't sat in a sauna in so many years and I'm doing it for the first time and you get those like crazy chills like, wow, this is great. This is really, really great. Obviously, it gets a little hot in there, but you know what I'm talking about. The first few minutes are just like heavenly. <laughs> it's like getting in the hot tub. I was like, dang, this is nice. I didn't even get one of these. <laughs> and so it's, it's that good feeling. So I'm encouraging your spleen to... to um, 
be a part of or a participant of those good feelings we get in warm places, you know? Even if it's the first few minutes, it's like, dang, that really hits you in a good way, you know? And the spleen starts to cry and you get aggressive about that. I see a part of your consciousness is standing here and you're just like, um, there's a cold um, look in your eyes, like um, wanting to snap this um, part of you back in alignment. Um, not That it should not be weak. It should not be a crying baby. It needs to, um, it has a responsibility. It has a duty. Um, it doesn't have time or doesn't have room to be a weak crybaby. And I, I say that you are weak. Um, to this uh, woman with the cold eyes, I say your weakness is, um, it's just you're controlling your emotions too much. And that's a weakness. Why do you need to control your emotions? And you, I tell you it's okay, please just, just whatever comes to you. Just tell me whatever comes to you. It's okay. Because it, it, I'm not doing this um, to be rude or judgmental. I'm just, I'm just having a straight conversation. We're just going to work through it, okay? We'll just bounce back and forth like a ping pong ball, okay? And you, you, there's just kind of a monster-esque version. It's, it's basically a part of you that's been hurt by life. It, it's been incredibly hurt by life. And so it's just coming out of the cruel sort of stare out of the face that wants to snap that baby spleen back into its place. Like, you need to grow up and be mature and not be a crybaby of responsibility. And so when that um, energy comes out, it's got, like, long claws and it's, like... Uh, you know, Wolverine gone mad on me. Like, it's just like, ah! <laughs> like this, like trying to rip me apart. Like, like, because I'm altering your relationship with being in control of your emotions by simply challenging you. Um, and you know what the next vulnerable thing is, is when you're not in control of your emotions, what are you going to look like? What are people going to think about you? And that's kind of the next thing that comes to me. Okay. Oh man, you, you, I keep looking at nails that have are infected. I think of uh, you know when a cat scratches you, man, it, it's like the weirdest kind of pain, and it itches, and it just seems to linger for a while. You know, it's just like an infected nails, and they and they're just like scratching me, and I'm like, dang, come on now, like you got some infection in them nails. <laughs> That's just like a hurt part of yourself, or hurt parts. Um, are like toxic, you know, they're hurt and, and hurt people um, kind of, we, we can store that inside all day long and make it so nobody knows what is hurting inside. But sometimes we can feel it from each other. We can just tell there's something hurting in there, you know, and you're not going to let anybody know, but that part is just, it, it just gets ill, you know, it just becomes a reflection of illness. So now your spleen has been in the warm water, but it's starting to get like hot and I see an egg um, being boiled. And the egg is fine with it. And it's odd, it has no shell, so it's completely exposed to the water. But it's a hard, it's a already boiled, hard boiled egg and, and hot boiling water. And it's so fragile and weak. And I say, okay, let's, can, let's just let it be whatever it is right now. Because I, I see in the reflection of the cold and cruel eyes, like they're kind of like spiteful. They look at this weak spleen, this emotion, these emotions, this, this uh, pathetic, like fragile, hard boiled egg, like in the hot water, it's all falling apart. And it's almost like you're trying to prove something. And I say, well, let's watch it fall apart. I, I think that it needs to. And you get again, really angry and you get so angry, you accidentally bump this uh, boiling pot of water and it falls onto the ground. And your hand is just like you grab my wrist and yank me like, like, how dare you? You, you keep saying um, things to 
again, try to protect this. This tells me that either this is a long time you've been holding on to something, um, a long time you've been um, dealing with uh, some kind of unresolve that has caused you to not be as like innocent or your, your childlike self or your heart is completely open. Um, something has caused, um, it really impacted you in a way that, that made you colder, okay? Which then impacted the spleen. You know what's interesting about the spleen? Um, there's an inner child energy about it. It's very innocent and sweet in its personality. Um, so when I, I go talk to inner child it, or spleen, it makes me think of inner child. So it's, it's your innocence, you know, is in there. It's your innocent emotions, you know? Uh, but we are working through this and you're doing a great job. It's okay to be what, whoever you need to be right now because you, you're going through a transformation and that's uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, we're, we're all uncomfortable. And you're very vulnerable because this is something you want to do is heal your spleen, but there's got to be some uh, movement, um, some nurture and some healing for your life, your life story, your inner child, the, your heart, your, your warm self-expression. Like we want to really amplify that true, true personality of yours, you know? All right, and suddenly being kind of transported to a totally different image and it's splintered wood, okay? It's just beams of splintered wood, like um, perhaps a house once stood here, but what remains is splintered wood. And it's old, It's like old, long forgotten about, um, overgrown forest. It doesn't even have a roof on it, by the way. It's just sort of being taken over by the forest and the wood is splintered, almost like it's splintered to protect itself but it's, it's like kind of an absurd thing. Like the splintered wood cannot protect itself from the forest. It just can't. Okay, hold on. Something's changing. Something get, is getting aggressive. It's, uh, it's coming up from, oh man. It hits me really hard. It's coming from the back. And specifically, it's coming from what, what can only be described as the back of the heart and the back of the throat. And then it's going up the back of the third eye up around the crown, okay? And it's like a big, fat, massive, massive, massive snake. And it's got these like intense eyes, all right? These eyes, it's protective. It's um, trying to be menacing. It's trying to be scary. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace myself as the adventurer. I'm trying to understand but I'm gonna replace it with you. So you are going to stand and the snake is going to be coming up behind you now. Then you are witnessing the splintered broken house and the forest is overtaking it. And I wanna watch how you react to something that is within yourself, okay? You instantly have a shotgun, but the snake is kind of uh, not, you're not aware of it. Seems to me like it whispers things um, that give you ideas of how to keep yourself safe from harm. That's how it translates. You don't know that there's a snake back there, but you get these um, ideas. And the ideas are going to help you. And um, one of them is a shotgun. You got to protect yourself. You got to protect yourself. That there's a lot more uh, problems. There's a lot more of the bad lurking around. And... Um, you're not going to let that bad get in. And, and I, I, I just, I kind of whisper in the other year and I say, the only bad here is, is you, is what I say. Because you're not listening to the right messages. You're listening to the influence of your pain instead of the influence of your harmony. It makes more sense to logic that you should always have to protect yourself then it would ever make sense to logic that everything is safe. It's very natural for a human being. We, we have an ego. Ego's there as a survival tool. And we, we have to be in a state of um, protecting ourselves, right? It's just a natural thing that we do and that we feel like we have to always be in protection of ourselves. But you're safe. Like you, you're so ridiculously safe. 
And that's part of the nurture of your spleen is like letting down your guard because your guard is protecting you from an illusion that's not there. And so you're, it's really just, um, it's already relaxing, by the way. You, you know what? You're a good listener because I know that this seems a little bit bold. The conversation is a bit bold and maybe, maybe a little harsh in a way, but it, it's like we're going to wiggle our way through this one with a little bit of discomfort. And, and we're going to see this um, side of yourself and we're going to let this side be, make whatever decisions be whatever. And we're going to work through this because we need to bring this back to the warmth back to the harmony, because that is going to empower the way that your spleen is functioning and how you are functioning in every single way, shape, and form, okay? In an infinite universe. All right. You start to cry on the shotgun, and you just say, I'm a fool, I'm a fool, and you toss the shotgun onto the ground. It's like, <laughs> it doesn't go off or anything. You just, like, give up. It's kind of what it is. So you cry, but you start to look like the hard-boiled egg that has no shell that's in the boiling water and it's slowly disintegrating. And you just cry and you say, I can't take it much more. I can't take it much more. And I say, take what? You can't take what much more? Because we need to find out what is real in your life path and what is your idea of what is real. Because sometimes we misinterpret and life is a crueler place than it, we actually have to interpret it as. Because we want to find inner peace. That's, that's always what we want. And inner peace isn't standing there with a shotgun protecting yourself from the unknown. You know, it's, inner peace isn't the cold eyes. Inner peace isn't that. Oh my God, I so, suddenly kind of transported to a new, new scene and there's a horrible event taking place. I see a woman and she's being, her literally, her half her body is being removed. Like, it's like her, it being ripped actually. So the, I see her from the back side and I see, it's almost like a, an invisible hand comes and, and holds that part down and just like rips off her hips and her legs and just like chucks it. And you're just screaming and you just um, in so much pain. And half your body's been removed. And I say, okay, rewind, rewind, rewind. Okay, let's just stop for a moment here. No, I'm not able to put, I'm not able to undo that. I'm not, so when I rewind and I, I just hold the hips in place. I, I see beings that shake their head and they say, no, this is, this, um, this is, this needs to have, a, 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 it needs to be experienced or this needs to happen. And I don't, there's no, there's no, um, emotion, there's no thought that can comprehend the, the unfathomable suffering of this event. So this could A, be literally a physical event that really impacted your, from the hips down. Um, it could be an event that really impacted your sacral chakra, your root chakra, which is um, how you are grounded in yourself and how you experience the pleasures of life. Um, so this event really, uh, I mean, it just like ripped you in two pieces. Like, it's no um, heyday, okay? <laughs> Zero heyday <laughs> is, like, the worst. <laughs> it's 10,000 bajillion times the worst. I just said, I look at the faces that, that had shaken their head. They said, no, this, this, is, this has a, this has to be followed through, this... We have to work through this one. And then I say, okay, well, what do we do now? Because you just, it's, it's hard to look at you like this. You're just a... I don't know. You're half of a person. And you're half of a person in a way that's, it's really hard to look at. It's, uh, I can't, I feel like I can't 
put you back together again. And I feel so sorry for you that, that you're going through this. It's... Something's changing. Something, I hear something cracking. I hear like screw, um, screwdriver, like nuts and bolts um, tightened. I see like hips being like turned really, really fast and the legs are kind of attached and it's like being reconnected. And it's not natural. It's like, um, it's just, um, Instead of organic body tissues, it's um, like nuts and bolts, okay? And you, you don't like this. You don't like um, what you have become. You don't like your lower half of your body. You don't like... Um, This is a uh, really different right now, like um, shock or trauma. It's a state of uh, almost like you can't feel anything, like you're kind of rising above an unfathomable horror and you're not really in the horror, but you are, but you just aren't because something happens and you're, you're in shock. So you just are kind of like not associating with it. And that's happening. And that, that's what I see. That's what I feel. There's a little girl and she pokes a, a balloon. And the balloon is made out of blood. And it kind of reminds me of a, like a womb, a uterus. And that the uterus is fragile. And when she pokes the, the uterus, it, it breaks instantly and the blood goes everywhere. And she screams and she cries and tears of blood on her white dress and her white jacket and her white pantyhose. Like everything is, um, it's really sad. It's really hard. And it's like, <sighs> it's a massive calamity. That's for sure. It's like, um, devastation. It's like horrible. It's like trying to figure out how to come out of un unbelievable devastation. Like and like a tornado comes through and, and maybe you survive it, but you're coming out of the rubble. But this uh, scene is like you're trying to associate with the rubble that you are now. It's, there's no thought or emotion that can um, process it. So it, I just, I say, well, then the, it's like you, your soul will have to process it. Because you, you don't, you, you almost like transformed from, um, I guess, uh, animated, um, Happiness. I see a, a child that is skipping to school with their books like Pinocchio becomes a real boy Like I see a scene that's really cheerful. Then I see this cheerfulness um, faces the ultimate um, shattering, okay, and there is no familiarity with this And I'm like, dang, you got one tough spleen. <laughs> like, that's a lot. <laughs> and to have your, your spleen still functional, you know, it, it's, you're still functional. But maybe that's where some of this cold came from. Maybe that was the emotion you could associate with over perhaps crying created the weakness where you had to be strong and it seems like being cold was the only way to become strong, you know? You, you had to freeze your emotions and become cold and to become overcome them and become strong. I will say there's a lot of energy exhaustion. We're reaching this uh, point, I feel it. 
And um, the new scene is like this. You're kind of, uh, it's not ice, but it's not like a um, type of water. It's more like a jello substance, but it is l watery. And it does kind of look like ice. Um, it's, it's weird. But I, I'm pulling you out of it, like pulling you out of an iceberg. But it's, it's gooey. It's gooier. And it's like a cold gel. I'm pulling you out of a cold gel and only your kind of your shoulders, your neck and your head are above the gel. And then I pull you out of this. It's like you're so much colder. Actually, when I pull you out of this, you are so much colder. And it's almost unbearable how cold you are. And you cry and you scream because the, the cold is so unbearable. It's like ripping flesh cold. It's just burning cold. Like, it's just very uncomfortable. And you cry and you say, when will this ever stop? And I say, we're healing you right now. And to heal you means that we have to um, work through everything that destroyed you and the way you patched uh, yourself up. It's like, uh, let's say you get a bone set. And uh, so we can start the healing process and whoops, it wasn't set right. So we got to break that bone and reset it. It's like, you're, you're kidding me. The horrors, you know. And so we patch ourselves up as best we know how so we can keep mo moving forward with life. But um, when we start doing this energy healing, like working on your spleen, um, we're running into how, how we can authentically heal this. So that we can heal everything. We can heal the past. We can heal your emotions. We can heal your inner child. We can heal, the, heal that cheerfulness that you truly are and bring it out of you. And we can heal all the fear or the insecurity. Like I need the shotgun and the protection. I need to listen to the voice of, of logic that is leading me in the direction of fear versus the voice of, of logic that is actually all about, I live in a harmonious world. Anybody would say, mm, I feel like I need the shotgun. But um, I'm telling you when it comes to energy, um, we, we, need to, we need to work with that. It's like um, the sounds of, of what is like the saint energy, the saintly energy. There's a reason why we are impacted by really good people. And people that are so good, it makes us cry and feel so thankful that they're real. And that's who you are. You don't need to be afraid of your life. You don't need to be afraid of the world. And whatever this is about, you can live and you can be. Still see there's a lot of work to do. Like It seems to me like the hips and the lower spine... It, it seems to me there's a strange connection here between your mind's eye and how it's trying to make sense of, it's trying to see, it's trying to gain clarity on your hips, your your sacral, your root chakra. Like um, it's trying to gain clarity on on this inconceivable event. And part of the clarity is going to come from your heart and from your emotions. And, and it doesn't ha even have to be the clarity you're looking for. It can just be a way of being. It's like, um, is inner peace a clarity? Yeah. Does it come with all the answers? It's just inner peace. And so when you have inner peace, you don't care about the answers. <laughs> you don't need them. You have inner peace, right? So you, you have everything you need. So... I ask you, what, what else can I do to help you? I feel like this is a very good, um, like, full circle experience. You want me to look at that hard-boiled egg in the water? And so I put, I move your consciousness into the hard-boiled egg so that you can be it. And I watch you. And I say, would you like someone to save you today? As in save you from the hardship. And I say, in this energy world, I can do that. And so I literally, I, I, tur I turn the temperature back to like neutral. So it's not boiling water and I just I take you right out of the water. 
but I um, amplify the sound of what the temperature is on the outside so it feels always warm for you. A warm and comfortable. Not like, oh my god, I can't breathe. No, it's, it's comfortably warm. And I see that um, from within the hard-boiled egg, a, a chicken, a baby chicken in, is born from within the hard-boiled egg. And the, the baby chicken is um, kind of covered in like blood and goo and um, chirps and asks for, for a warm mother. Um, it's like looking for, looking for help. I put it under a heat lamp and I wash it off. And I um, just kind of uh, pet it, I guess. And it's nice and dry and warm and cozy. And I see the little baby chicken is sleeping and resting in a very warm space that feels um, safe. And it's, it's beautiful, actually. It's really helping you to see your beauty, the beauty of who you are. And that means that your spleen, too, is, is the nice, warm baby chicken that is resting. And something about your identity or your mind, your heart, your life path has lead, led you to this moment. Yeah, which is a really good thing, right? <laughs> it's a good moment. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for this. I really appreciate it. It's it's always interesting what what we're going to discover. Mm. Hmm. All right, for those watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.